a tragic moment, but also a bittersweet moment. Lionel Dawson says 37 years after his two sisters were killed in the bombing of MOVE, he has now finally retrieved portions of the remains from the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office. It's going to be a, j a joyous occasion. I'm a little hysterical right now because I can't. It's all too real. Katricia and Sonetta mm -hmm. Dawson were just 12 and 14 years old when they were killed in the bombing of MOVE in 1985. Dotson showed us his t-shirt that has photos of his two sisters. The shirt also reads, the city of Philadelphia took them from me. He took my family, and that's why I got this in remembrance of them. Although Philly's medical examiner was under different leadership at the time of the bombing, the office apologized to Dotson Wednesday. It came out on her own. Now you hear that? 37 years. They done held that man two sisters two babies they killed no nobody arrested for it and, and uh they want him to feel uh uh joyous it's supposed to be a joyous occasion for him after all this time like the damage that they caused with the move will never go away man they it's still people in jail for move on the court and said, I'm sorry for your loss and gave me that sincere uh, heartfelt apology and I appreciate it and I accept it. The apology comes after it was revealed last year the remains of the two girls were being held here at the medical examiner's office and Penn Museum for years. A report released in June recommends yeah, the museum. medical examiner's office should amend the death certificates of all 11 move victims to reflect that their manners of deaths were homicides, not accidents. The ME says it will make that change. They finally come off the shelf because they should have never been stored in the dark, damp shelf for the, in, the, in the first place for 37 years. I finally get to take them away from the city that helped kill them. And today, Dotson had his sister's remains cremated. He tells me he. You know, that's how diabolical the people is. And then they're going to say, yeah, we dropped the C4 bomb on your house. But everybody that died in there was an accident caused by them. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring you a little story tonight, you know, uh, about a, a, a situation that happened here in Philadelphia some years ago. You know how uh, you're never safe. You're never safe from the. The, the, the government, the police at any given time, if they want to, they could do what they want. You, you see how they moved with them. They, they, they started one little situation where they could have just arrested nine people, nine individuals. They could have did that. Y'all know how easy that is, but they would rather had dropped a bomb on a whole city block destroy over 61 houses we're not even talking about we talk about the people who had nothing to do with it but they were the ones that were supposedly complaining about the move so much they destroyed uh families that they still haven't been able to repair to the day shout out to ramona africa and chucky africa john africa uh free mumia you know that's all uh uh the um the Part of the nine that got caught up in the uh situation yo i appreciate y'all coming out moms davis cake the door you know yeah so yeah i appreciate y'all coming but yeah like one of the brothers that was a um, uh, move in that move situation, he got 41, he did 41 years, but um, uh, he was one of the originals, Chucky, Chucky Africa. Now, you will always hear about Chucky Africa in the jails. Like, if you're a person who was uh, um, got moved around a little bit, you would always hear about Chucky, man, how how much of a stand-up guy he was and you know like such a good dude he was and, but he always stayed in uh in the hole they always kept chucky administrative custody segregated housing you know but um i got to a uh, institution uh 
one of these, you know, mountain up in the mountains in Pennsylvania uh, called Monahoy, Monahoy State Prison, uh, SCI Monahoy. And uh, I think Chucky had been down for maybe 30 something years now. And he was in an older prison. And they took everybody in that old prison and transferred them around the state. And they, they dropped Chucky in Monahoy. So uh, they automatically put him in the hole, you know what I'm saying? So I was in the hole. I'm in the hole already, and, and uh, they bring him in there. So he back there, and I'm just, I don't know. Who, I don't know him, but I'm trying to uh, find out, yo, who this dude, like, hey, they got all this, like, protocol for. Like, yo, he's the somebody, you know what I mean? And then I heard <clears throat> I know, an older brother I used to kick it with, uh, uh, he had been locked up for maybe thirty some years. Uh, he was a he was a, he 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 had started the uh, the Philadelphia chapter of the Black Panthers back in the sixties. This old head I used to bust it up with the whole. But him any him and Chucky had a good rapport, so I got introduced to Chucky Afri Af Africa through him. And when we came out in population, I was able to walk the big yard with Chucky. And I remember Chucky wouldn't get his, Chucky dreads had got long, man. I mean, real long. They was gray and he wouldn't cut, he still wouldn't cut them. They had to let, he would, he would have stayed in the hole regardless, just because he wasn't cutting his dreads. You know what I mean? But one thing about talking to these kind of guys, man, it, they never talk about the injustice that was placed upon them. They always talk about the injustice that's still going on, man. And I used to be like, damn, I know like the, how the guards, but the the people and the, they 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 showed him a a high level of respect for who he was. But none of that shit meant anything to him. Like it was always about justice 